Man, oh man, I sure don't care for the Tomy motorized line. Let me repeat that. Man, oh man, I sure don't care for the Tomy motorized line. Don't look at me like that. So what's up members of the Peter Griffin household? It's your host with the most troublesome junction back in again with another review video. Now, this one's on a train. This one's also on Tomy, but it's not Thomas. So this is the Jurassic World Tomy train set that was released last year. I believe it was trying to coincide with Jurassic World Dominion hype, but it has no Dominion branding on it. I will get into that a little bit later. But this actually was uh, shown to me by a stamp over at Stamps Playroom Store. I'll be sure to link all their stuff down in the description. Highly recommend you check out their stuff, especially if you're a fan of not only Playrail, but other really cool things that you can find typically over in Asia for the Thomas and Friends line. Great folks over there, able to hook me up with this thing for a really good price. But uh, we're going to be giving a deep dive discussion into this because I do have a lot to say on it. Either way, this is going to be one hell of a review. Isn't that right, Potato GLaDOS? You are a horrible person. Or I know, listen here, you little shit. Without further ado, let's discuss the packaging. So on the front here, as you can see, it is definitely an American style locomotive. And one thing that Stamp had told me was that this kind of locomotive style just isn't a common Tomy thing. They really don't make American engines like that. And honestly, it makes sense because typically they specialize in uh, Japanese style of trains like bullet trains, steam engines and such. And then of course, British railway engines, mainly when it comes to the Thomas and Friends line. So seeing this on here, I mean, I'm sure it's gonna make a lot of Tomy fans happy. I can definitely see some people buying elements from this set to repurpose for other things, which I will get to later. So on the box there, as you can see, it does come with, um, it's, I'm assuming this is supposed to be blue, or it could be beta, because it did release and coincide with Dominion. It's a little weird. And then of course you can see Rexy on the box and then the Stegosaurus down here. Remember this detail. But looking on the back of the package right here, it does just give you some general overview of, you know, setting it up, how everything plays, where to put batteries at, etc., etc. The thing that I love most about this package is the fact that you can display this with your train stuff and it looks just fine. But I can also put it with my dinosaur collection and that would also be just fine because of course here you have blue slash beta then you have all the dinosaurs on the front with very prominent Jurassic theming and logos. But without further ado, let's open this bad boy up and see what we're working with. So I do got to preface this, this has technically been opened before. A uh, stamp took it out to uh, test it, make sure everything worked. Honestly, I think he had much more fun with this than I'm probably going to have with it. Oh! Oh, we got an SP keychain. Look at this. I saw this on their Instagram and this is the most adorable shit ever. I'm putting this with my other tiny figures. It's a tiny SP keychain. We stand SP in the Peter Griffin household. Can we have an SP appreciation day? What a fun little gub. I love little gubbins like this. This is this is so cool, man. But let's come in with the unboxing of the actual train, train a bob So this is basically what is all in the package. When I first saw images of the set, I thought it was a complete train set. And uh, yeah, it's not. It's just the locomotive itself. So I guess it'd be a sin not to start off with uh, the locomotive itself. Right, look at that. Has that traditional Tomy style of packaging where they'll put it in this like plastic sleeve and put foam blocks in the middle of it. There we have one of the cargo containers, and we have the diesel. Have you been Americanized, diesel? Oh, it looks like it has one of those features that some Tomy engines do, where it has three modes, where it has off, and then it has on, and then it has a high speed mode. Like, I think that is such a cool feature that some Tomy engines have. I remember Streamline Thomas having this, because Leo Kim Video made a big video talking about it. Man, good times. Leo, if you're watching this video, love your content, man. I have to always preface that. Leo's an absolute king. So this looks like it's just storage containers. It reminds me of the beginning scene of the first Jurassic Park movie. Um, where, you know, the uh, park goers are loading in the um, velociraptors into the paddock. Uh, kind of reminds me of that. You could recreate that with these. They are very light, so if you have a little die-cast forklift or something, which 
I'm not gonna lie, I might end up doing that. That sounds really cool. Or for functions of the set, which I will kind of get into later, maybe these are just meant for supplies like food and such. If you guys have ever played the Jurassic World game on the uh, App Store, there is a scenes in it where you do feed the dinosaurs and everything and they come up in these shipping containers, of course, to, to safely feed the dinosaurs and everything. But I think something like that, you know, you could kind of imagine that this is like a bunch of raw meat and you know, stuff like that in here. Honestly, with rolling stock like this, it's really up to you what you want it to be. Though on this side, it does say warning, and I really don't think that, you know, food would be that hazardous. So maybe there are dinosaurs in here. Okay, and this right here is one of the coolest things in this set. You know, this right here is what really made me fold on the set because I have not seen a piece of Tomy merchandise, like rolling stock like this. I really, I think that, I actually think that this is original to the set, but uh, yeah, it's like this double bogeyed wagon where you put the dinosaurs in it. So it's supposed to be like, oh, they're in containment and you're transferring them. And you push the button on top and the little side comes down. Like that is such a cool thing. This right here is what I would have wanted to see. You guys remember back in the day with the Thomas and the jet engine pack? I wanted to see something like this be done, not the stupid shit that they did. Honestly, like this is so cool. I can imagine so many like Thomas and Friends collectors buying parts of this set or even just the set as a whole and just using this right here to recreate the uh, scene from Thomas and the Jet Engine. All my Thomas and Friends stuff has been put into storage. It's all in boxes off of my shelves. Uh, but I really would like to get another one of these just to make that custom because Thomas and the Jet Engine is one of my favorite Thomas and Friends episodes. But I don't think that that's going to come anytime soon. I don't feel like paying, you know, $65 for another one of these sets, damn it. And then we have this little fucker right here. It's a tiny version of Blue or Beta. <laughs> You, you just never know with the merchandise now. I will get more into that later when we do a discussion over everything. It also comes with stickers for the uh, double bogey wagon right here, as you can see. And then there's just this big piece of cardboard in here. What? <laughs> Not gonna lie, this kind of pisses me off. But we'll get into just why that bothers me. I'll get everything cleaned up, sorted out, and turn the camera around so we can get a proper view of what this set really has in store. So here's everything laid out of what you get in the set. I mean, of course, SP is not included in the set, but I don't care. SP is now officially canon in the Jurassic universe. You can't tell me otherwise. All right, but I will set SP out of the way and so we could talk about the engine itself. So looking at the engine, uh, oh, piss, all the blocks fell off and everything. But here's the engine itself. I do think that it works for the theming of Jurassic World because in the movie, everything has this very sleek silver color scheme with hints of gray and dark blue on it. That's just kind of the, the, the modern color scheme that they went for back in uh, the 2015 movie. But once again, though, bringing up the fact that this was released in 2022, at that point, Jurassic World came out seven years ago. So it's a little odd that they're releasing this now to capitalize off of the success of Dominion, don't you think? Before anyone says though, like, oh, maybe it's a Dominion playset. There is no way this is a Jurassic World Dominion playset because this is undoubtedly something that would be on Isla Nublar for the park, but the park is closed down and the island is blown up. That's what happened in Fallen Kingdom. There is no revisiting Isla Nublar in any way, shape or form or any visuals of the park for that matter. So you can't really say that this was made to coincide with Dominion. So that does kind of lead me to believe that this isn't beta, this is blue. But the thing that is a little weird that we will get to, but that's for the discussion when we get to blue next. But back to the engine itself, I really do think that the design though, for being an American engine, you know, I could see somebody buying this and spray painting it, giving it its own custom liver and whatnot. I really do think that this is such a nice engine, especially when I put it on my Jurassic shelf. Like it's gonna look super cool next to my other vehicles. It just fits the theming very well. I will give Tommy that. Once again, up here though, we do have the three features. We have just the normal on, and then we have the high. And Mattel, notice how this set uses one AA battery, is still able to move, and has more play features than your shitty Tommy thing. You know, let me not, actually, let me not hate on Mattel so much, though. As much as I hate what they did with the Thomas line, 
They're doing wonders for the Jurassic World line. They make great dinosaurs. I do like how on the front, this little buffer beam area, there is this splash of red. It just adds that extra bit of vibrance to it. And it fits with the coloration that goes along with the other trucks of having the hazard stripes be candy cane colored. I think it all just really works. Such a solid engine. Now, the next thing I will get to here is blue. Now, the thing that was really confusing about this is that when I saw it was, as I said before, I thought it was beta because this set released in 2022 and I thought, oh, well, maybe it's Dominion theme. But the more I thought about it, I was like, I wouldn't make any sense. The reason I just mentioned before, this does not look like it would be in Dominion at all. So we can rest assured that this is blue. Huh. Well, we're just gonna ignore this. But the thing that bothers me though with blue merchandise as a whole, even beyond just this figure, if I reach over and I grab this right here, you know, you're, you're probably like, oh, well that, that's a bigger blue. You know, this is uh, the 2022 Hallmark ornament that came out to coincide with Dominion. And you might be saying, yeah, well that's blue. No, this is actually beta. This one is blue. If you look at this right here, it makes no sense. These two are the same size. So now whenever you get merchandise now, this honestly goes more or less beyond the set and just my problem with Beta as a character, I guess, is that when you get merchandise, right, especially of such a tiny figure of blue, you could easily mistake it for Beta. So now I'm just gonna be like, okay, well, is this Beta or is, oh, is this blue? You know, it's one of those things that you could either have, like this, a really big beta figure or a really tiny figure of blue, and the scaling's all fucked up. Like, this right here looks like beta in blue, like how it should be. These two ornaments are literally the same fucking size. Like, I, I, I don't understand it, man. But anyways, back to the individual figure itself, though. It is a really nice figure of blue, though I will say the face does look a little bit chunky because of the articulation they tried to add to the jaw, which I get what they were going for, but like you look at this and it's like, oh, I can't change my face. I'm also noticing some discoloration. If you look at the tail, I see what they were trying to do is that th that is kind of supposed to be the undertone of the coloration there. That, that's more of the matching color, but as you can see, like right there, it looks like the paint from the bottom kind of oversprayed to the sides a bit more than it should have because it does kind of have that bit of miscoloration in it. I understand it though, because this is an insanely small figure and they were just trying to give as much detail as they could. Speaking of detail, look at this Mattel, painted toenails and fingernails. What's your excuse, damn it? I already gave the comparison of the Hallmark ornament, so let's do an actual Mattel release blue figure. This is the Walmart exclusive battle damage one, which does have painted toenails, which is, very surprising because a lot of these uh, dinosaurs don't have painted toenails, but there aren't any painted fingernails, which is a little weird, but I guess there's the comparison there. Yeah, the, the scaling for this supposedly being beta, if you wanted to do that, yeah, it, it, she's way too small. For those who aren't familiar with the Jurassic franchise, you're probably confused as hell like, wait, 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 how is Blue's daughter supposed to look identical? Well, it is a plot point in Dominion. All other Velociraptors on Earth during that time are died they're completely extinct besides her but because some of her dna has water monitor in it she's able to reproduce asexually on her own and she gave birth to a daughter that is basically an identical clone to her you see where the problem comes in with the merchandise when you have clone characters for such a small figure having as much articulation as it does movable feet tail mouth i do think it's solid but anyways let's get back to the train shall we so here comes the the play feature part of the set i guess you could say and it's this middle car right here now if i take it off right here uh notice how on this right i put the stickers on wrong this is supposed to be cart one over here in cart two yeah i i put the stickers on the wrong way so um i'm just gonna have to cope and deal with that but the whole play gimmick with this thing is you push the button the side comes down and then it's supposed to be like the dinosaurs getting loaded onto the thing. The feet slide in this little notch right here so you can 
have this go around your set without them falling out and slipping and sliding. Really clever that they added that. They really didn't have to, but respect on them for adding it. And then you just close it up and the diesel would just pull it along and basically looks like you're giving the dinosaurs a, a trip on the goddamn worldy wind. But one thing I do really want to point out, as you can see here, there are two slots on this. And as you saw on the front of the package right there, there is Rexy right there, but you only get one dinosaur. Now, that wouldn't be too much of an issue if this was a cheap set. This set retails for 65 fucking dollars. Like, are you serious, man? These three things right here in this small ass dinosaur, $65. Now, I need to preface this. The price of the set that I'm ranting about here does not reflect Stamps Play Rail Store in any way, shape, or form. This is my gripe with Tomy as a company. So I just need to make that clear in case there is any confusion. My gripes are solely with Tomy when it comes to this because it's just so much missed potential. When Stamp first sent me the images of the boxes and everything and all the promotional art, it just was like, oh yeah, Rexy and Blue are on this train. I'm like, oh cool. You know, regardless of if I don't collect Tomy and everything, I still get two dinosaurs that I don't have in my collection. I don't have any of these Tomy dinosaurs. For those of you who are familiar with the Tomy diecast uh, line of toys, they also do the same thing for dinosaurs. I mean, they're not diecast; they're plastic little toys, but they're basically the same thing in terms of packaging and everything. And they only included one dinosaur in this set. I'm sorry, but I think that's bullshit. This set should have come with Rexy. And don't sit here and say, "Oh, it would have been too much." You're telling me $65 for a box that isn't even all the way filled in because of this box bloat. That's what I was talking about earlier that I was so upset with it. You're telling me all of that for $65? I think you're crazy. Tomy has released other train packs like in the Thomas and Friends line for around, let's say 20, maybe 40 bucks max at times. But this $65 for this and no track included, like, I thought that this was going to be an entire playset, but because of Tomy's shitty marketing of this set, yes, on the back of the box, on that small last corner up there, as you can see, it just shows this kind of stuff right here, but that doesn't change the fact of anything, like, you're showing all of this on the front of your box, this is some shit you should put on the back of your box. A customer is going to look at that and be like, oh, look, it has all those dinosaurs in it. You get the train and it's also on a bit of Tomy track. Like they could have done so much more with this. I don't think it would have hurt them to throw in Rexy and given you a circle of Tomy track, as you can see right here. All of this blue track right here is supplied by me, by the way. Once again, tying into the issue with the theming of this thing, you're trying to make a Jurassic World play set why not include, of course, Rexy, but why not throw in the fucking Indominus Rex? You know, the icon of that movie. And if you're saying, well, we just wanted to capitalize off of the merchandise for Dominion. You know, the, the Giganotosaurus is the main villain. You know, this guy right here. But here's the thing that really fucking sucks about that. If you want to say, oh, you can't include the Indominus because it's from an old movie, Sure. I mean, I strongly disagree because Mattel is still releasing merchandise for Indominus to this day. I don't think Universal would have had an issue with that. But they made a Giganotosaurus in this same line. They released it in a figure pack that comes with two other dinosaurs. You're telling me that if you wanted to make Dominion merchandise regardless, let's say that this has nothing to do with the movie. It's just its own little fun playset. You could have thrown in the Giganotosaurus right here. This right here is one of the Mattel released figures. It's their minis line. They're these little squishy rubber toys and they scale pretty well with this playset. You could have thrown in the Giganotosaurus or even Rexy. You know, for the fact that they didn't do that, it just makes me go like, wow, they really did not try for this playset. I'm sitting here looking at this set and I'm just like, it's cool, but it is so bare bone. There's basically nothing to do with this. You have this big grand gargantuan wagon, but all that room wasted. 
I'm sorry, Tommy, but this is top tier bullshit. If you're really trying to sell something, why not give it a reason to be bought? You know, like it's so fucking stupid. It wouldn't have cost them anything else to have thrown in a Rexy or a Giganotosaurus or even an Indominus Rex. You can't tell me otherwise. It just, there's no excuse for it. I don't know why I decided to be stingy with their dinosaurs in their dinosaur playset. Like, it makes no sense. $65 retail and for the fact that since I live in America you have to have this imported so you're probably going to be paying $20, $30 for shipping fees like are you serious right now that is ridiculous I honestly would have been content with this set if it did include Rexy or something like that I would have thought like then like okay you know it is a little steep but maybe a bump down the price but no throw in the Giga Throw in Rexy. Hell, throw in all three of these dinosaurs I feel like they should have done in all honesty. $65, yeah, you better get me some fucking dinosaurs to play with. All you can do with this set is reenact a code 19 and have it so that uh, Blue broke out of the thing and that she's maybe terrorizing some part goers or something like that. Oh, wait, there are no tiny figures to use for the part goers. Once again, look what Mattel has made. It's so weird, right? Especially coming from someone who used to make videos on the Thomas stuff. It was always the other way around. Tommy was the one that was putting in all this effort and all this quality into their stuff. And Mattel was typically the one who was cheapening out on things. Now it's the other way around. I do have a video discussing more about Mattel and a, a conspiracy of sorts that I have with their Thomas and Friends line. Especially comparing it to how they handle other other properties like the Jurassic one they did not cheap out on any of the stuff that they did like like these dinosaurs right here these things cost like three five dollars a piece and they come in little mystery container things like that is so cool meanwhile Tommy's too stingy to give us other dinosaurs in a 65 dollar set as I said this wagon is super cool this play set is also super cool but just so much missed potential right here I think that I've rambled long enough about that. I'm going to put it back on the track, move it out of the way, and then talk about these containers a little more. It won't be too long of a discussion, of course. It's really not too much to say. So the thing about these containers is they're just little uh, hollow plastic things that come on this little flatbed. Uh, kind of a shame that the flatbed isn't detailed in any way. It's just like kind of there. Like you have to really have the containers on it for it to really mean anything. Once again, a little weird to point this out, seeing as they do have flatbed cars that exist, especially for the Thomas and Friends line. You know, maybe this set could have been redeemed if it had come with a, a tiny plastic crane or a gantry crane or something like that. So you could at least lift the cargo or something else to do. Like, just give us something, man. And for the fact that the set didn't even come with track too, like it is a very bare bones set. These things definitely have a lot of potential for like Jurassic photography and whatnot, but I just think that as its own, like a kid playing with this, yeah, you on its own, I don't think you'll get much play out of it. You really have to have like other dinosaurs and other assets and stuff to play with, like maybe a big expansive Tomy layout or something like that. But on its own, yeah, there's really not much that it's working with here. Maybe this set would have benefited better if it did come with a tiny SP keychain. So here we have the play set going around this little circle of track right here. I added some dinosaurs to the middle here, uh, the Indominus Rex, and then of course Rexy. Uh, the set going around, like it does look really nice. And I think it is a really nice play set. I don't want my views to get misconstrued by my complaints. I think this is very nice as a train thing, but I just can't get over that price point. And for the fact that this just feels like a bare bone set that had so much more potential. I think that the marketing is a little weird for it. And for the fact that there is so much potential 
with how much leeway they had for marketing, I'm very shocked that they didn't go all the way like Tomy typically does with their stuff. Hopefully this isn't meant to be like a kind of a foreshadowing of what's to come with Tomy stuff. I would really hate to see them stoop down to the same level as Fisher Price when it comes to stuff like this. But my final thoughts on the set is I think it's a great set, but I would 100% if you are interested in it, wait for it to go on sale. I think that this is the set where you should pay between $30, $40 max. Do not pay anything over that. You know, if you have a lot of, uh, you know, trains and stuff like that laid out for a Tomy collection, and you have maybe some of the realistic kind of engines, like ones that are based on actual trains outside of Thomas, I really do think that this would be a fun little addition, even for customization. And as a Thomas fan, you know, you could use, as I said, the middle car, it has a lot of potential. You could even use it as like a, a big ore wagon, put some rocks or some pebbles on the inside of it. Or as I said before, you could redo it, make it into a big flatbed or make it into the Thomas and the jet engine thing. I think it, it has so much potential outside of just being, you know, a, a dinosaur train. But I think for that price point, I would say wait till it goes on sale. Once again, I'd like to shout out Stamps Playroll Store for hooking me up with this set. Absolute W mans. You know, they've been nothing but friendly to me. Uh, honestly, outside of even just talking about trains, just fun people all, all together. I'll link all their stuff in the description. Whenever they get their website up and running as well, I'll be sure to also add that down there. But be sure to take a look at their eBay store. Buy a couple things. Do yourself a favor, man. You might even get a tiny SP, damn it. But you know what? Here you go. Oh, 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 oh. Fuck, 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 fuck. Rexy, you're not supposed to break shit yet, damn it. Oh, fuck. Well then, I, uh... Guess this is a good time to end the video. Uh, so that's all I gotta say for this video. Thank you all so much for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And let me know, are you interested in this set or would you like to see them do more with this kind of stuff? So that's all I gotta say for this video and I'll see you guys on the flip side. Spins an ass! Spins an ass! Yes! Spins an yes! Spins an yes!